Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me. You are most welcome. Well, I've had a short break. Back to something interesting now. So something new for me. Uh, it's the Great Wall Hobby 128mm or 12.8cm K44 pack gun. It's an anti-tank gun, very high velocity, um, developed by the Germans. Uh, after, after apparently after seeing a similar sort of design used by the Russian army on the Eastern Front in 1941-42. They decided they needed a very high velocity, long range uh, tank busting gun um, and of course they, what they call them, the uh, Panzer Arbeverk Kanon uh, pack for short. So it's pack 44 uh, and L55. Now I've not, I've not actually seen any Great Wall Hobby um, armour kits, so this is actually something new for me. So let's have a look what we've got. Starts off, that's a little bit dished on this particular box, but uh, starts off with, I'm zooming in, starts off with a bit of uh, CAD work, which I'm never a big fan of, I don't really like this. I wish they actually get somebody to make the model, instead of having a, a screenshot, which I think looks really cheap and I don't understand why manufacturers do this. It doesn't sell the model to me. You know, this sort of monochrome screenshot looks a bit stupid, I think. But anyway, apparently there are some uh, photo etch parts and a P set. Oh, there's an upgrade, upgrade P set is not included, it said. But it's also got, I think, the Rhine Metal. Uh, by the way, it was. Sorry, I should have said that. Um, so it was actually made, um, made in Germany, obviously, by Rhine Metal and Krupp. I'm using crop steel, of course, their famous high-grade steel, which, if I'm not mistaken, actually, the uh, the Krupp uh, company got most of the actual metal to, to, to create the steel it came from Switzerland, I think. But anyway, let us have a look. We'll go to the other side, just a bit of artwork. We'll get straight into it, I think, without further ado. So, let's get that lid off and see what we have. As I say, haven't seen a great wall uh, armour kit before. In the airplane kits, but not in the armour kits. This is sprues. Uh -huh. uh, oh, yes, and we've got upgrade set. Uh, this one is included, obviously. So, uh, this is not one I own, it's been lent to me for review. And um, there's quite a few extra bits and pieces. Let's see what they are. So, first of all, we've got a little advert for some of them other products, and I must admit, I'm Whilst I don't think much of Great Wall Hobby's instructions generally, I do find their actual kits are very good. The mouldings are excellent. And you've got here uh, a flak, uh, Hannah Mag with a flat cannon on it. You've got Hannah Mag with a searchlight on it. What else have we got? Cargo carrier half truck. Another, another based on the Hannah Mag. Is that based on the Hannah Mag or is it based on the, um, the big truck that they used? And then there's another one there, another Hannah Mag based thing here. It's got a like a canvas truck style. That's quite interesting, isn't it? They'll make a nice subject. Oil drums, jerry cans, very like Tamiya, they've got similar you know, additions. Zundat motorcycle, BMW R75, and some quite interesting stuff here. Um, and yeah, here's the Rhine Metal gun we're going to be reviewing today. This one. Sorry, zoom me out a bit more. Zoomed in there. Uh, and then there's another flak, uh, Hannah Mag flak gun, and then you've got all sorts of things you can buy a Maybach engine. Um, are they upgrades? Yeah, they're upgrade sets. Uh, Nebel Werfer, Werfer, the uh, German rocket launcher. Siege, siege, uh, siege mortar, you might call it, really. Um, and then you've got an anti-aircraft 37 meter made flat gun and then some German rockets etc. Quite, quite good though, it's quite a nice high quality leaflet. I think that um, yeah, that sells their sells their products rather well I thought. It's quite, quite a good addition. And then we have got a colour call out for the whole shebang. Uh, showing this rather sort of early war style of camo. Quite a light. Uh, Sort of, uh, typical dark yellow that the Germans use with a little bit of uh, stippling and striping on it. 
very minimal camouflage. Uh, and obviously we've got lots of wheels on this one. So these are sometimes to uh, towed by horses, sometimes by trucks, but often by horses. And you forget the Germans did not have that much mechanised transport actually for things like this. They were often using the old horse. Anyway, instructions. What have we got? So uh, a little bit of a photograph on the front, and then the uh, the part sprue tree shown. And typical jo uh, Chinese. We've got no description of anything. You know, no history. Nothing really. Nothing. So Wikipedia is your friend or other specific websites to get the history. Anyway, it starts off and we go straight into it here. And we've got building up your main sort of platform uh, on which the, the gun will pivot. Uh, and the leg support legs to take the weight, obviously. Uh, the main sort of uh, chassis, if you like. Um, quite a few PE parts, so that looks quite good. And quite a few parts that are not going to be glued and then yeah, they've gone and done this typical great wall hobby where they, the instructions come apart we'll come back to that one see again it's not numbered these are numbered the actual stage is numbered as you can see two but no the other one isn't numbered it's just it's random so I'm not sure whether that's okay it's a correction sheet sorry I've just spotted it here we go again clear as mud aren't they really I should say correction sheet at the top, uh, not within the actual diagram, but anyway. So we'll come back to that. We just accept that Great Wall Hobbit are useless at instructions in terms of their layout and organisation of them. So we've got the wheels being created here and then the back of the actual uh, breech area of the gun and the, uh, the legs, the stabiliser legs. Uh, then you've got all your... Uh, um, shock absorbing suppression system for the recoil here and then you've actually got your breech uh, assembly being built here which looks really nice got to say uh, so the plastic's like but it certainly looks quite promising um, here we've got that breech system complete with the elevation system oops, elevation system being brought brought in and brought together um, and then you get your suppression system all going on to the main uh, support uh, breech brackets as so so to speak and then you've got all your controls here for your, your fine micro controls for elevation and uh, your horizontal movement uh, around to make sure that the gun is able to be positioned accurately uh, for aiming and then you get your shield and I think this is where there's the, the upgrade set comes in because I think that might be a metal metal part uh, all your shielding um, to, to protect the, the gun crew uh, and then you bring those two things together add your wheels uh, assembly that you've already created with the complete with the, the sort of bogies if that's the right right way of looking at it um, big hefty wheels aren't they I mean this is going to weigh uh, I don't know the actual figures but I'm guessing it's about 18 20 tons easy uh, thereabouts because it looks very heavy <laughs> Uh, and then you've got this fat, big um, anti-blast muzzle here, uh, sort of an anti-flash muzzle uh, with all the holes in it to try and make it less obvious about giving it position away when it's firing. And then you've got various tools that are being attached to it. There's all sorts of tools for adjustments and uh, spades and things to help dig it in. There's tank-like tools, aren't they? Because you've got pitch little pickaxes and all sorts of things there uh, and that all goes in onto the stabiliser chassis system at the bottom and that's kind of the construction done really and then you've got so then we've got this correction sheet now it mentioned firing mode here travelling mode firing mode travelling mode firing mode so I think what's gone wrong here and, and this is quite amazing travelling mode here and this is where the this, zoom you out you understand but better what I'm trying to say We've got this sheet, and then we've got the actual main instructions here. So they've actually made some mistakes. Um, they're not highlighting exactly what those mistakes are. But they put them together on one sheet here, travelling mode and firing mode. And then there's another correction regarding the wheels. What, what would be helpful, and this is what annoys me, you know, I know I go on about this all the time now. 
it's the Chinese disease again, isn't it? But why can't they actually highlight the differences where they're actually... So all they've done there, really, is they've basically copied uh, bits of the actual sheet they've already shown you assembly. And if they just highlighted them, you know like Airfix do with the, the red, green, although they've misused that as well. But if they highlighted in red, for example, corrections uh, where there's an error in the main instructions. But you get to this and you, you're going to have to go back and be studying back and forth and it's not clear what they're trying to drive at. I'm struggling to see what they are banging on about here. It's not clear. It's going to take time to work it out. It's not self-explanatory. It doesn't need to be written. It just needs to be an arrow, highlight. It's not complicated. Come on. They do annoy me. They just annoy me. Great wool hobby. Uh, I mean, I'm being negative, I know, but actually, on the positive side, they have actually got a stapled instruction sheet this time, which is not just falling apart in many, many sheets. So that is a plus. Things are improving, obviously. But come on, guys, just get your act together. What is it with these Chinese manufacturers? It's not complicated, really, is it? Right. I'm going to start with the sexiest bit first, which is this really nice looking box. And this is where we've got our Rheinmetall 128mm cannon. What a nasty big behemoth of a gun this is going to be. And oh, it comes very nicely wrapped. Mm. There we are. Mm. And this is the upgrade set. I oh, know, what was I just saying? Ah, okay, so they've been listening to me almost. <laughs> So you can see what they've done here, they've actually highlighted it in a colour, which is exactly what I was just calling for. So why can't they do that with the rest of it? It's crazy. Okay, anyway, they've got this right. So they've highlighted it uh, to show you that these are replacement parts that are photo etch here. It's look very nice. Um, and how, exactly how they fit in. So you, you bend them and you get some proper metal plating. That's going to look much nicer than the plastic, isn't it? I think that's a, a no-brainer, a really positive improve but look at this what a beast this cannon is now i don't think i'm going to open the bag is it re oh it's resealable i can open it okay well, let's go then yes let's have a proper look and then there's another bag with these parts are they resealable too i don't like opening other people's stuff if they're not resealable Struggling to see. I don't think we need to open it really, but what I can tell you is it's it's weighty. It's really weighty. And uh, look at this bridge. Uh, sorry, muzzle, I should say. Look at the muzzle. That's absolutely incredible. With all the holes in it. Flash eliminator at the tip of the of the cannon. That's very very nice. Um, it's not actually got any uh, rifling, which is a little bit of a shame. Think, you know, you see the Tamiya stuff like, which one did we have recently? The Sheridan, I think it was, Sheridan tank from the Vietnam War. And that actually had rifling. Now, all right, you wouldn't probably see it. I think that's their, their thinking here because of that long uh, muzzle, flash eliminating muzzle. You won't see that in detail anyway, so they're not bothering. But the actual figuring of it and the turning of it is absolutely superb. That's really, really nice. Uh, I wonder what the standard piece looks like when you don't have the upgrade set. We'll have a look in a minute. You know it's not very so much that, I think. Oh, there it is. Let's, let's do the comparison then. Come on. Here's the plastic and here's the metal. And it just looks better, doesn't it? It just looks better and it's thinner, it's more scale like. I think it's going to be an obvious upgrade. Very nice. Yes, I like that. That's fine. And then there's some very, very fine, which I won't get out. That's some incredibly fine little. And they're so small, I'm struggling to. You can probably see these better than I can. They're like little screws. Uh, rivets, I think they are, in fact. And bolts. I think they go on the wheels. We'll see later. That is a nice upgrade kit. Um, strange that it doesn't give any instructions for what those are, those little parts. No mention of them on this leaflet at all. But hey ho, that's, uh, that's a great little hobby for you. But no, they look good. Um, 
Oh yeah, okay, here they are. The, yeah, you can see that the, I'm right, it's the rivet or bolt heads that go on around the outside, just to add that bit of realism. That's a nice upgrade kit, like that. Yes, I'm impressed. Let's put it back in its um, protective wrap. Any impact. There we go. Well, that's, that's impressive. Yeah, I like that. That's looking very positive for a start. Then we have a bag here. What have we got? Um, it's the shock absorbing springs. I think this is what's. I think it's in the suppression system. I don't think it's in the road wheel part of it. And then some wiring, obviously, which is nice. Pop that back in there. Then we've got the normal uh, gun. I'll just zoom out this. This is the plastic version of the gun, which, again, yeah. Uh, I can see why the owner has gone to that metal upgrade set because it's, yeah, it's chalk and cheese. And especially with a long gun like this, you know, the metal one is going to be so much better to look at, I think. Uh, give it so much more presence. Um, the only danger with these metal cannons that you can buy that are turned, and I've, I've had this a couple of times myself on the uh, King Tiger, they're heavy and they can really unbalance your model and make it start tipping up and all sorts. So be aware that sometimes you need to put the counterweight in or you might need to fix certain parts like the, uh, you know, the turret itself uh, where the mantle that goes up and down um, at the breach, you, you might need to fix it because sometimes it just has so much weight and uh, mass it just won't go into an up position so you have to decide in advance just be wary, it's something you can easily work around but something that we really don't always think of until it's too late on my King Tiger it has this drooping heavy metal barrel um, are these these are not resealable bags, which is unusual. I think Great Wall Hobbies normally are, but I've been given special permission to open them. Or do just that. Let's have a proper look at the plastic. That's yeah, a shame they can't put them in resealable. So I think they normally do. What have we got? Oh, yes. This, now, Great Wall Hobby, as I said, their manufacturing in terms of their moulding is usually brilliant. So this is going to be one of them, I think. Another one. Look at this. So this is this great big uh, sort of platform base that forms the chassis um, and the, the sort of turntable, so to speak, rotating base for the for the turret, so to speak, actual cannon. Um, and you've got your um, the sort of breech uh, barrel lock here for transit. Various. Levers, these are the actual sort of cranks and levers that get used for winding the gun back and forth, up and down. And then you've got part of these stabiliser legs here. Um, beautifully moulded, no flash, absolutely superb. And you've got various tools and rods and things here. Oh, that'll be the barrel rod, won't it, for cleaning the barrel, I guess. You, you telescope them together, or screw them together. Clean your barrel with it. Nice sprue. It's got ejector pins on the back, but there's nothing anywhere that would be a problem at all. That's very, very nice. That's a great start, I have to say, for the plastic. I think it's going to be a good mess somehow. Now then, we have a slightly different type of bag, it's sort of very cloudy, I don't know why. It's very odd. Oh, didn't do that very well, didn't tell me to push down enough. Green, green. Now then, lots of parts, I probably won't know what they even are. <laughs> There's a lot of pieces here. This is part of the um, the carriage work, the towing section at the front. Then you've got your uh, elevation gear here, and then all manner of little parts and wheels for adjusting the the gun angle. Um, you've got the breech down here. Look at that. That looks nice, doesn't it? The breech. 
very impressive. Um, lots and lots of tiny, very fine moulding, very very beautifully done. Yeah, I like it. It's very clean. There's no ejector pins where this shouldn't be. There's no horrible release agent all over it. Very, very nice looking bit of moulding that ready to go. I'm right in thinking, I think this is part of the sighting system. Uh, that's very nicely done as well. With the periscope sight, I think. There is a little bit of photo actually here. Standard photo actually comes with the kit. Uh, not a lot of it has to be said. But that looks great. All good so far. We've got a very small sprue over here, a little tiny sprue. Let's just have a look at this. Oh yes. Now I think this is like a generic sprue that they've got from Great Wall Hobby from other kits. Uh, it's just the tool set, so you've got wire cutters and you've got a, an axe and a sledgehammer and spades. But all beautifully done, look at that. Flawless. I like the wire cutters, they're really cool. And you've got a pickaxe here. Um, and then you've got various sort of uh, crowbar type tools. And uh, this is like a jack handle here, for jacking. Beautiful. Again, flawless. flawless. That's it, isn't it? So far, so good. Can't see anything nasty at all yet. Nothing has annoyed me apart from those instructions. Which is a good one. <laughs> Normal. There we go. Okay, we've got two here that are identical to each other. So, what have we got? We've got the wheels. And it's got these really sort of almost World War One style cart horse wheels, you know, really heavy duty for dragging it across the snow, across the roads. And you've got your, uh, this is your slight bogey sort of system for the wheels to mount onto. And then there's this um, flash eliminating muzzle we spoke of, that's the plastic version. It looks pretty good actually. Not as good as the metal one though, you can actually see a very minor flaw, I'm being very picky here, but a very minor flaw if you look here, just at the back, see that there, it's a little bit gunked up, with a little bit of flash, but there's only that one hole in fairness, but you won't have to worry about that if you've got the upgrade set, but it's a nice kit, you know, and it's got these uh, suppression uh, shockers, su suppression shockers that suppress the uh, recoil from, and I bet there's a lot of recoil on this gun. It's a big cannon. It's like a World War One artillery piece, you know. Huge. And then there's all sorts of wheels, and the, there's the, these are the wheel caps for the wheels. Looks really good. Nothing wrong at all. Great. One more. <coughs> yes. So these are the. Um, it's the shielding, isn't it? And the protection for the, the gun crew, which of course, with that upgrade set, you've got this in metal instead. But here, obviously, you've got those rivets are moulded in. I've done a good job of it, actually. I think this is the bit, one part of the upgrade kit that is not quite as essential, perhaps, because the plastic is so good. Um, but of course, you get the cannon with that upgrade, and I think that's probably a, a must have for something like this. Um, and then you've got the mounting for the actual uh, where are we? mounting for the barrel there, and you've got the uh, parts of the uh, support legs, the uh, um, what do they call them? Uh, arrestor legs that sort of dig in. They have a, a plate at the back to dig into the ground, stop it from jumping backwards when it's fired. Here's the protector plates for the crew. And yeah, it's a really, really nice kit actually. A flawless moulding, just what we've come to expect from Great Wall Hobby. In fact, in many respects, it's um, it's kind of exactly what we've come to expect from Great Wall Hobby, isn't it? You know, absolutely uh, <laughs> baffling instructions, not very clear to be honest, uh, but excellent, excellent kit, beautiful moulding. Uh, it always makes me wonder if these guys have got 
just different companies doing these jobs. You know, you've got one company making, designing and making the kit, uh, the actual parts, who are doing a brilliant job, quite frankly. And then another company, not doing such a brilliant job, that have designing the instructions and it's like never the twain shall meet. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it probably is. That's my hunch. Anyway, don't be too down on them. I thought that was a very nice kit indeed, actually. That was uh, surprisingly good. No issues at all, apart from its instructions. Eight and a half out of ten, I think it's fair. Maybe even nine, maybe even stretch to nine. Very nice kit. Just, just get the instructions sorted. You know, I'll repeat myself again. Sort your instructions out, uh, Chinese friends. Put a bit more effort in, show us a bit of history, explain what the subject matter is all about. Um, you know, do a bit of colour coding, a little bit more clarity, and you'll be on to a complete winner. Because, to be honest, with really decent instructions, Tammy R style, that would have been a 10 out of 10. There's nothing wrong with the kit at all. It looks fantastic. So there we go. So I'm going to say 8.5 out of 10. I think that's fair, really. Anyway, there we go. Um, thank you for joining me. A bit of a brief one today. It seemed very straightforward, this, didn't it? Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And if you are a subscriber, don't forget to ding the notification bell. And that way you get early notification of new videos that are being uploaded and coming your way soon. And until the next time, thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you'll stay well. Um, thanks a lot. Bye for now.